Hello and welcome, especially to our Canadian friends. Prime Minister Winston Churchill called Canadian Air Commodore Leonard Joseph Birchall the saviour of Ceylon. Birchall warned of a pending Japanese attack on the island of Ceylon, now modern-day Sri Lanka. His story is one of death and glory. Birchall was born in St Catharines, Ontario in July 1915. When he was in his teens, he became interested in flying and worked odd jobs around St Catharines to pay for flying lessons. Birchall enrolled as a cadet in the Royal Military College of Canada in Kingston in 1933 and graduated as a pilot in 1937. At the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, Flying Officer Birchall flew convoy and anti-submarine patrols from Nova Scotia in a supermarine Stranraer aircraft. In early 1942, he joined No. 413 Squadron Royal Canadian Air Force, then based in the Shetland Islands, and flew patrols over the North Sea. After the Japanese successes in Southeast Asia, the squadron was sent to Ceylon to provide a reconnaissance force. On the 4th of April 1942, only two days after his arrival, squadron leader Birchall was, was flying a PBY Catalina flying boat patrolling the ocean to the south of Ceylon. Nine hours into the mission, as he was about to return to base, ships were spotted on the horizon. Investigation revealed a large Japanese fleet, the Nagumo Task Force, that had been responsible for the attack on Pearl Harbor. This group included five aircraft carriers heading for Ceylon, which at that time was the base for the Royal Navy's Eastern Fleet. Birchall's crew managed to send out a radio message, but the Catalina was soon shot down by six Zero fighters from the carrier Hiryu. The Japanese continued to strafe the wreck and the survivors. Six crew members were eventually picked up by the Japanese destroyer Aizokaze and spent the rest of the war as prisoners, which for many servicemen usually meant death. The Japanese raid went ahead despite Birchall's signal, but the warning put the defenders on alert and allowed the harbour to be partially cleared before the Japanese attacked Colombo. As the senior Allied officer in four successive Japanese prisoner of war camps, the resistance led by Birchall helped to reduce the Allied death rate from an average of 30% to less than 2%. Many Australian prisoners of war owe their life to the bravery of Birchall. He repeatedly stood up to the Japanese and demanded fair treatment of the prisoners in compliance with the Geneva Convention. In his first camp, he struck a Japanese soldier who was forcing a wounded Australian to work. This earned Birchall a severe beating and solitary confinement, but won him the respect of the other prisoners of war. In 1944, Birchall encountered a situation in which sick men were being forced to work on the docks. He ordered all of the men to stop working until the sick were excused. Birchall was beaten and sent to a special discipline camp where he again was beaten. He saved many ill soldiers by taking their beatings. The prisoners of war were liberated in August 1945. For two years, Birchall's wife Dorothy did not know whether he was dead or alive. His diaries, written during his captivity and buried, formed the basis of a number of Allied wartime trials at which Birchall testified. After his return to Canada, Birchall was made an officer of the Order of the British Empire in 1946 for his work at prisoner of war camps. The citation in part read, he continually displayed the utmost concern for the welfare of fellow prisoners with complete disregard for his own safety. His consistent gallantry and glowing devotion to his men was in keeping with the finest traditions of the service. In the immediate post-war years, Birchall served on the Canadian attaché staff in Washington, D.C. He was a member of the Canadian NATO delegation in Paris. In 1950, U.S. President Harry Truman appointed Birchall an officer of the Legion of Merit, saying his exploits became legendary throughout Japan and brought renewed faith and strength to many hundreds of ill 
and disheartened prisoners. He later commanded a fighter base and was Commandant of the Royal Military College of Canada from 1963 until his retirement from the Canadian Forces in 1967. Birchall was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his part in detecting the attack on Ceylon and for alerting the Allies during that 1942 flight. Birchall was an official observer in the 1994 general election in Sri Lanka. In the year 2000, Birchall was appointed a member of the Order of Canada. In 2001, he was inducted into Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame. Birchall was the only member of the Canadian military to have earned five clasps for his Canadian Forces decoration, representing 62 years of service with the Air Force. The 2001 Vimy Award recognised Birchall as a Canadian who made a significant and outstanding contribution to the defence and security of Canada and the preservation of democratic values. Birchall was honoured in the year 2009 as one of 100 most influential Canadians in aviation. He died in Kingston, Ontario, aged 89 in 2004. His widow Kathleen donated money to the Air Cadet League of Canada to set up a scholarship in his name. Oh, and by the way, Virgil was dubbed the saviour of Salon by the Canadian press and not as claimed by many by Winston Churchill. Thank you for watching.